Back here on the hour, hanging out with Heather Reisman, uh, who runs a big book chain. Do you guys like own every bookstore uh, that's got more than 100 books in it? Absolutely not. You own a lot, though, don't you? We own some. You own a lot. <laughs> we own some. How, how is this, uh, this economy? You employ many thousands of people, so. Yeah, almost 8,000. 8,000. This economy, how has that affected your business? You know, I have to say, uh, counterintuitive, because generally in a bad economy, all ships sink. Mm -hmm. All ships rise in a good one. Um, it's almost as if the comfort of a bookstore we have actually seen our business maintained over the last while. Traffic is up. People but are just reading for free in your, in your aisles, right? A little bit of that. Yeah. But, you know, we're here for that. That's yeah. our job. Um, but actually, you know, I worry every day. But I think there's something about books, about the community feeling in a bookstore, the sense that you can go there for very little money, for almost no money, maybe mm -hmm. no money, or maybe some money. Um, so, so far... We've, we've been holding out and we think there's something about what we do that happens to fit for the times. But this is a difficult, scary time. I mean, do you anticipate, when you have th that many employees and you run a lot of stores, do you anticipate you're going to lose something here? Uh, not employees. No. We are not, we, we, we uh, no. One thing about Indigo, we've run ourselves very conservatively and what I know is we can weather any storm mm -hmm. without laying off employees. But this is a tough time. I, I, I would think anybody who spends time and it's, and it's probably everybody thinking about it, it's opaque. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. You, you were at, um, at Cobb Beverages when the soda wars were on, right? right. The Coke, Pepsi, right. the big battles, and the right. economy was brutal then, too. Right. What, so, I mean, can you learn? Different, different, different no, totally it? different, totally different. This is a world event, and no one's quite sure where the bottom is. I mean, you hear this every night on the news. On the other hand, I think we have to believe we will make it through. The question is just how long. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the damage. I mean, you can't talk about this as collateral damage. There are real people out of real jobs facing real difficulties. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's a time, I think, to be careful. When we were running the bio uh, of you and, and your story, uh, we saw the flash go by, but the, uh, you guys made the decision not to run the magazines, not to carry the magazines that had the Prophet Muhammad depicted in them. What do you think of that? Mistake. How come? Um, Why it was run? okay. So yeah. it was it was a funny issue because the f the first thing we collectively decided not to run was a small magazine that came out at the time that there were riots all over the world, and we decided very simply not on the grounds of it wasn't the right thing to sell, but the safety of our employees. And it was just we just had to make that trade off. There were so many things going on. Our stores are open till midnight. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of young people working in them. We did it for the safety. A few months later, Harper's came Harper came out. As it turns out, the decision was made almost with nobody involved. It was just, it was in, so somebody decided not to have it. Yeah. Uh, but still, I, I am responsible at the end of the day. That was a mistake. To do that? Yes. It's interesting how, you know, at that time, people get caught up by fear. There's a lot going on. I mean, CBC just had the decision not to run them, which, you know, they were roundly criticized by many people for and supported by others. First decision, I think, was understandable, whether right or wrong, understandable. Second was just a mistake straight out. We know that you, you didn't want to carry the copy of Mein Kampf, and I, right. we just found out today that Russell Brand, a great comedian in the UK, is putting out a book called Mein Kampfy Wampfy. Um, <laughs> will you guys carry that book? I suspect we will. We have, we have a very simple policy, just to tell you quickly, and we started this from the beginning, and, and uh, as opposed to saying it was a mistake, it was a very clear decision. Our decision is we will not, to the best of our ability, uh, best of our knowledge, carry child pornography, mm -hmm. Uh, written material with instructions on how to create weapons of mass destruction, so like the anarchist cookbook or right. whatever, and anything written with the sole intent of inciting society toward the annihilation of one group. And we say, we're not looking to censor those things. They're available all over the place. We wouldn't look to have them censored. We just don't want them. What about those bin Laden, the letters to bin Laden book, the letters from bin Laden that he put with his manifesto? Would you guys carry a book like that? I don't know the book. Uh, if it, if it, it's if, basically his letters, that he, his, 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 his message. If it's all about trying to get an entire society to wipe out another society, then probably it would come, we now have a panel that looks at these things, but. It's amazing we have conversations about things that happen uh, that are centuries old, but as, as the business changes, who knows what's gonna happen. The record business changed, movie business is changing. Uh, Newspaper. Newspapers. You know, right. trading drastically. Books, people still carry books right now, but I mean, Amazon had that Kindle thing, which right. was huge when Oprah fell in love right. with it. Everybody went crazy. Right. Um, you guys have an application. I, I didn't. No, you didn't go crazy for that? No. We can't have those up here, do we? Why don't we have anyway, those? Anyway, we have something we have think something is else, an yeah. alternative, right? So, um, you know, from, first of all, I don't think books are going to disappear the way. Um, hard music did and whatever, because I think there's something intrinsically valuable about the physical book. People want to put them on their shelves. Yeah. Nevertheless, people are going to read digitally. There's no doubt about it. So we've just launched Short Covers, which is a digital destination. And what's interesting about Short Covers is it's device agnostic, 
meaning. Um, you can go to the app, download it for free on your iPhone, your Blackberry, your Android. Soon it will be on Nokia, other. And anybody can get something it. Android something other than just a crazy robot that walks around, because that would be amazing. Because if you have one of those, I'd like an Android. <laughs> I have an Android. Right in my back pocket, I have an Android. Google's telephone, Google's yeah, entry into okay. is Android. So you can go to short covers. You can read any first chapter for free. You can download a book onto anything that you're carrying. And the reading is really compellingly uh, easy. And the thing is, over the next couple of years, it's going to get better and better. You think for kids' books it would be huge, right? Because there's a whole gen several generations now that were born entirely in the digital era. So this is what they know. And I wonder if kids' Not books kids. will go there. I think uh, my belief is kids still want that tangible, and it's about reading to kids. But for anybody 12 and up, mm -hmm. so little kids know, but they are going to read. And our feeling is wherever you are, you just download short covers in the doctor's office, on the train, whatever, download and read. It takes about... 30 seconds to download. And the books will be cheaper than the hard copy? Oh, yeah, much, right. much. Thanks much for cheaper. coming to the show today. Pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Hey, check it out. Have a good one. Thank you. Um, all right, so you can uh, stay there. We've got this one. Obviously, on the website, you can learn about literacy, uh, but it sort of ties perfectly into Canada Reads Week on CBC Radio, which is doing some great stuff. Are you carrying all those books? Together? Absolutely. Right. Not only, but one of my Heather's picks yeah. from a year ago is up as a selection, and I am rooting for my pick, which is Book of Negroes. Do you actually read? They're all good. Do you know all those books, or do you just oh, go, any minute, I know that one? Oh, no. Yeah? I'm obsessed with my right, picks. There you go. Yeah. Uh, check out cbc.ca slash Canada Reads, uh, and, uh, and for uh, Heather's Foundation, go to loveofreading.org. All right, Heather Reisman, we'll be right back with LeVar Burton. <laughs>